Welcome to another road trip and another racetrack. This time, the road trip takes me and my 1992 Acura NSX and even a thousand miles from East Tennessee to just south of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Our destination? The driving range at Dakota County Technical College. Built in 1991, you won't find any woods or wedges at this range. This reconfigurable maze of asphalt, known by its full name as the Decision Driving Range, caters primarily to commercial and law enforcement training, but the college also rents it out for other purposes, which is how it became track number 25 on our lap of the world. That's right, folks, we are back, excuse me. That's right, folks, we are back again. Yes, it is still 2020. This is still Lap of the World, and I'm still Richard. Uh, we are out here today at what will indeed be the 25th track on our journey at the Dakota, excuse me, the driving range at Dakota County Technical College here, uh, just south of Minneapolis, Minnesota, on a gorgeous but slightly breezy day. I'm kind of in the lee of a, of a tree back here to try and hope hopefully cut down on some of the wind noise coming through the mic, but uh, uh, it's making it very pleasant. Uh, the humidity quotient, as one would hope, is uh, far less than it is down south right now, so I can stand in the shade and cool off pretty effectively. But that notwithstanding, um, it's been an interesting journey getting here. I think driving through this kind of northern Midwest from uh, central Illinois up through Wisconsin and then over to uh, Minnesota uh, is a gorgeous drive. Uh, weather at times could have been better, drove through pretty much a monsoon this morning getting here from my stop, uh, overnight stop near Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, thankfully, my uh, hashtag sponsor me, uh, Falcon Azenus RT615K Plus, are pretty decent in the rain at near full tread, so I didn't have any trouble uh, navigating the torrent that was bucketing down in front of me. But we have made it here. Uh, I am already teched in. This is a, an SCCA Track Night in America event, and... Uh, <laughs> So we will actually be our first uh, first time, I think our first session actually starts at like 4.20 p.m. Insert jokes here, I'll wait. Controlled substances humor dealt with. Let's go take a look at the track. With the abandonment of the proposed Pine Run facility in the mid-2000s, Brainerd a few hours north, and IndyCar only ever running a temporary street circuit in the city, the DCTC driving range is the closest thing to a home track for the greater Minneapolis area. But to talk about the track, we first have to talk about the campus on which it sits. The school at Dakota County Technical College opened its doors in 1971 and currently enrolls just shy of 3,000 students for various programs. Commercial driving has been an available curriculum since at least the 80s, but it wasn't until the following decade that they laid the tarmac for their driving range. Built in 1991, the range boasts nearly three miles of available tarmac, including a vehicle dynamics pad, a traction circle, various types of intersection, and even a traffic signal. The configuration selected by the local SCCA region for our night out at the track followed a route that emphasized safety, keeping peak speeds down and allowing for the most runoff. In this configuration, one lap comes in at just over a mile in length, but don't let the size fool you as there are fully 15 turns as I count them in that mile. So as you will now see, you stay quite busy in the car. A lap of the DCTC driving range is, I'll be honest, a somewhat violent affair. Starting on the pit straight, your lap begins with what should be a flat left kink. That leads into a still fairly quick right hand bend, which in turn tightens to the slowest part of the track. The left hand chicane deposits you onto a short straight in the first of two passing zones. You next confront a downhill left that you think should open, but doesn't, because you want to be track right, mid-track at worst, to make the left-right lane change that follows. A blind right takes you up the hill over the crest and onto the longest straight and the second of the two passing zones. Following this, you'll want to brake early to avoid upsetting the car over the rough transition and into the first of several turns. A left, 
another left, followed by a pair of right-handers, another left, and into a final right that will set you up for a late apex to the left that leads you back onto the pit straight, completing your lap of this configuration of the Dakota County Technical College driving range. With a session in the books, let's uh, let's just call it what it is. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to take a, a fast kind of, probably like national level autocross course and just run hot laps around it, this is it. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I am in second gear, not the whole time, a um, couple times I'm getting close to the limiter and short shifting or to make a section a little smoother through a quick transition and not have to deal with the on off throttle torque quite as hard. I'm going down or going up to third for the moment, but pretty much second year the whole time. But it is fun. It is very challenging. It's a, it's a crying shame the surface isn't a little bit better. Pausing to elaborate on that comment, the driving range isn't necessarily in disrepair. There are no holes or major cracks, however the surface is rough, there are numerous patches, and some transitions are less than graceful. Enough to upset even a streetcar with fairly compliant suspension. The local SCCA region may be exploring some sponsorship that might help to pay for a repave and some proper curbing to both make the course better for enthusiasts and extend its life as a training facility. So if you're a business or individual that wants to make a positive difference in the southern Minnesota car community, here's an opportunity. For now, though, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to continue to have fun for the rest of the day. So without further ado, let's uh, jump back in the car. Before we see what I accomplished after some practice, let me take a moment to acknowledge our host. The Track Night in America program is the SCCA, or Sports Car Club of America, taking the crack dealer's approach to growing the hobby. Hosted by the various chapters, the Land O'Lakes region in this case, the TNIA events are, thanks to corporate sponsors and weekday track rental rates, among the least expensive and most widely available ways to drive your own car on a legitimate racetrack. Your $160 as of this filming in 2020 gets you about an hour of track time broken into typically three 20 minute sessions over the course of usually an afternoon or an evening as the event's name implies. Most events happen on weekdays as I mentioned so the later start dates help accommodate folks who can only take a half day off work. Registration is simple and at least at the two track nights I've done so far the volunteer organizers have always been extremely helpful and friendly. The only real question then is how familiar can one get with a track with only 60 minutes of seat time? Well, here's the answer in my case. That minute and nine second lap, backed up by two subsequent consecutive laps within a couple of tenths, puts me comfortably in my usual, competent if not spectacular, performance envelope. I'm told that is around the same pace as one of the SECA volunteer locals driving a stockish S2000 on the same tires, and I'll take that all day long after having to do a two minute drill to resecure an exhaust flange right before the session. finished all three of our sessions at this uh, what ended up being a lovely track night in America here up at uh, Dakota County Technical College but uh, 
I'm beat. This is a, a very physical track. It's, uh, you know, especially no power steering and a rear end that likes to take a walk occasionally. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to call it there and get on the road, folks. Thanks again. And with those candid words to Josh from Dynamic Photo Verx, who you have to thank for the lovely drone footage and some of the trackside shots, it was indeed time to repack the NSX and get on the road. Some might call me crazy, and given the raised eyebrows and conversations at the event, several at least thought it, that I would drive a thousand miles to lap what many might consider a particularly humble and relatively obscure driving facility. Honestly though, half the fun to me is finding, visiting, and experiencing these places that, had I remained siloed in my region, I may never have heard of. Most importantly though, at the end of the day, I still had fun, met several fellow enthusiasts, and returned to tell the tale. And that, for the moment, is all there is to tell. So until next time, I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I will see you in the next video, if not at the track.